There's more value in the connections outside of these talks than actually listening to the talks themselves. Like uh, we've spoken to a lot of very experienced, very tenured people who have lots of, you know, great stories um, and mistakes that we can learn from so that we don't have to make them as well. So, um, Phil already said the title. I'm not sure if I should be proud or embarrassed, but I'll tell you how it works. So, um, I work at Roth, I work at Native Instruments. Uh, we're a big family of music companies that came together a few years ago. This hack comes from the Isotope days, so only my boss and team members know this coolness or horror, but now the rest of you will know it as well. So, yes, I made a Chimera. Why did I do it? Oh, there should be another slide there, oh well. Maybe we'll come up later. Um, why did I do this? Uh, there should be some slide also from Midjourney about a programmer making the one ring because at one point we had a painful process of updating version numbers in our software. But many years ago, we didn't release that often so it wasn't a big deal. But as our release frequency increased, that was a bottleneck. So an afternoon I looked at this, I was like, okay, tried a few things. When it came down to it, two things needed to know the version numbers. C++ compiler and Python build systems. So how can we get that into one file? Note these are slides, don't name your macros this poorly, give them longer names. Don't put major version as a macro number, please. Um, so, show of hands, is this C++? Yeah, most people said no. Yeah, you know, preprocessor may be something, okay. Is this Python? Could be, yeah. So this is what, uh, after preprocessing, this is your C++ program. And this slide, this is a different slide, is also your Python program. So here's our goal. We want in um, C++ to see something like this for a major version number. And in Python, we want to see this. So here's how we'll do it. We'll exploit the preprocessor. So we can define a macro major version that gives us the declaration for a major version number and then we can assign to that. And so in C++, after preprocessing, we get this. Python, it looks like this with comments. When you import this, you get this, major version. So uh, we can get major, minor, version, and build number this way. We'll be good citizens, undefine them afterwards. C++, you get this. Python, it looks like this. And then when you import it, you get these four variables. But we don't just want to put this in a pollute the global na namespace, so let's add a namespace. So we can define another macro like this, print namespace, that starts the namespace uh, and sets up another little weird variable declaration because we had to have this print namespace and you can't just have some Python thing that hasn't been a variable that de declared, so we'll make it print namespace equals zero. So in C++ it looks like this. And in Python we assign zero to this variable, print it again at the end, and when you import that you just get this print namespace. What about a header comment? Well, in Python, comments are just strings. And so we can have something like, actually, slides are out of order. It should be this, sorry. Um, it's common in Python, and we can get rid of this by just if defing it out in C++. And in Python, on C++, in C++, it becomes this. Python, you get this with comments, and the interpreter sees this. So all together now, here's the whole file. C++, after preprocessing, looks like this. Python. Here's what you import. So is this cool or horrible? I don't know. It, it definitely works. Saved order of magnitude of uh, developer time. Um, but I left one part out. No developers don't manually update this build number down here. Don't worry about that. That's a whole nother weird thing we can talk about another time. Thank you.